Welcome back to episode four of the Players First YouTube channel, where we put players' needs first and help them make the best decisions to reach their full potential. So in episode four, we're gonna dive in and get a little more tactical. The first couple episodes kind of set the mission and vision, uh, helped kind of outline um, the difference between our, our, our participators and competitors and kind of built off that thought process of what, what does winning mean for you? Um, and so I wanna get a little more tactical go from the, the macro to the micro and give you some, some actionable tools to walk away with, uh, again, building off those first couple uh, thought processes. So what is the limiting factor for you when it comes to achieving your goals? And uh, again, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll probably start with a couple different um, uh, focuses. The first will be obviously my, my expertise as a strength and conditioning coach. I can speak to that the most. Secondarily, uh, I've worked with baseball players for the last uh, six or seven years. Uh, I played baseball my entire life, so I can I can speak to um, some of the limiting factors from that standpoint. Uh, and then lastly, again, that that coaching experience. Some of the athletes I've worked with from you know seven, eight, nine years old up to you know 25, 26, 28 years old. So um, kind of maybe talk some of those stories, and then I'll talk about some of the responses that uh, I received via uh, DM. And uh, I had some good ones. I thought they were they were really useful. Uh, I had one that was just cracking a joke, which I thought was pretty funny. But um, let's start off with that first one. Um, my expertise as a strength coach. So the first thing that I go to, and this probably is across the board for all athletes, is like, are you strong enough? And uh, there is a couple factors that go into that, but I, I really do think that that is the, the first place that you're gonna want to dive into because it covers some other really, really important foundational things, which would be uh, number one, movement capacity. I'll define that in a second. Secondarily to that would be um, range of motion and mobility. Uh, can, you, can your body do what you're asking it to do on the field? Uh, and then the other part would be uh, probably, and it might be its own separate category, but you know, injury prevention, health. Uh, but like strength, and I think the reason I talk about strength first is it's not very cool or sexy to talk about like, hey, you're a really good mover, or hey, you have a ton of range of motion. Um, I think coaches talk about them in, in their own ways. Uh, usually a good mover is somebody who's very athletic, um, somebody who is uh, really mobile or agile, maybe you've heard those words before, still alluding to that really good athlete. Uh, but strength, strength's cool, right? And I think that um, I've really changed my focus uh, over the last three or four years from absolute strength to being strong enough. So I'll rattle off a couple different, um, you know, ranges that you're gonna wanna hit on a couple different lifts, uh, and then we'll go into some other uh, foundational kind of physical qualities. So um, squat, two times your body weight, Deadlift two times to two and a quarter times your body weight. Um, as far as bench press, you should be able to bench press your own body weight. I think there's some other variations that might be better and more applicable to our baseball players and softball players, but bench press is super easy. Something that you can go to the gym and just see if you can if you can actually hit that. Um, there's also some, some single leg uh, exercises that I think are really useful. Uh, one that I've been implementing a lot more is the, the single leg or, or one leg squat. Uh, Mike Boyle alludes to a couple different uh, rep or strength ranges that he likes to see his athletes at. Um, I want to say it's about one to one and a quarter your body weight. Um, I'll double check and if I need to, to update you guys on that, I can. Um, pulling exercises. Uh, we should be able to do 10 body weight pull ups. Uh, I, I really like the idea of pull ups because it's, again, super simple. You can hop into the gym, your high school, anywhere, and see, can I do pull-ups? Uh, I think it's a great uh, insight into relative strength. So, um, you know, typically what I hear is, is younger athletes throw them on a, on a pull-up bar and they can rep them out, no problem. Their strength relative to their body size is adequate, it's good. But as you get older, your growth spurt happens, puberty happens, maybe your diet habits kind of get, uh, are not the greatest and you start packing on some some what I call unfunctional weight um, then you you, uh, you start losing start, start losing that ratio of relative strength where uh, like myself personally I couldn't do a single pull-up till my junior year of college so I carried a lot of bad weight and, and it was a huge limiting factor for me uh, as as an athlete um, 
more so at what it kept me from reaching my full potential. I think that size in general, which I'll talk about in a second, size in general can be your friend, but again, you gotta make sure that it, it, it's functional and, and it, it maps to your, your goals. Um, the other one I think for our youth players, like you should be able to do 10 body weight pushups with perfect form. Uh, I think that's another huge focus for the softball players I work with. Um, they should be able to do push-ups with good form, not our push-ups where their arms are at 90 degrees and we're letting our shoulder blades roll forward and our core positioning is really poor, but like really sound, good push-ups. Uh, and you can do them with these, 10 of them. I was not able to do a sound, like a good body weight push-up until I was about 14 or 15 years old. Um, and uh, you know, I think that's that's the commonplace now. I think I think overwhelming majority of athletes don't have adequate relative strength to their body size, um, and uh, that's a huge, huge limiting factor across the board. So, get strong enough. Uh, and I think I caution you with that uh, from the standpoint of we're not just chasing numbers to chase numbers. We're not making power lifters. We're not making bodybuilders. We're not making uh, meatheads. We're making baseball players and softball players we're making good athletes and sometimes when it comes to strength within your sport you do need to have like really really high strength numbers uh, and they will uh, directly affect your ability to perform but specifically speaking to baseball and softball players uh, sometimes too much can be can be bad where if you look at the mobility and range of motion of, of a power lifter it doesn't it doesn't help you with your swing or it doesn't necessarily help you with your um your throwing velocity and uh, Eric Cressy made a great post a while back looking at the, the the thoracic or spine mobility of your average power lifter versus your, your your average major league baseball player and there's a big difference because the demands of the sport require um, different ranges of motion so um, you know get strong uh, and and focus on that it's usually an area that a lot of athletes at the youth levels and, and even at the high school levels they skip whether it's they don't have a, a, a sound program at the house, uh, at the at the school, or, or something to do at home, um, or they don't have the equipment, there's there's a lot of excuses that that get thrown out there for why like oh I don't get stronger, but in reality you can you can I mean it's called Google, look it up, find a good coach, find a reputable coach that can give you some workouts and some ideas to do at home. So that'd be the first one, huge limiting factor I see within the the baseball and softball population. Um, the next one's not so much, I'd say, in the, the softball population, but I think this is more in the male population. You have athletes who are on either end of the spectrum of the uh, need to gain muscle mass, and I think all athletes need to gain muscle mass, but you have some who carry less body fat, so they're they're smaller. Um, I, th I think, you know, the average freshman in high school can range in like from, you know, 90 to, to 130, 140 pounds. Um, any of the athletes who are bigger than that, um, you know, those are probably your early bloomers hit puberty a little bit earlier than everybody else. Uh, but that's a, that's what I, I've seen on average. And, uh, you have the other side of that spectrum is you have those athletes who are 150, 60, 70, 80 plus who carry a lot of bad weight. Again, that was myself when I was, when I was in high school, uh, where you can get away with that, especially at the younger ages, cause that, that mass component does help you, um, from a throwing and, and swinging standpoint. But then at a certain point, uh, the field gets bigger and you get slower. And again, that relative strength and speed uh, becomes a, a, a limiting factor for you. I think that doesn't necessarily play true for softball because the field literally only changes one time uh, and the field is so much smaller where uh, if you look at the college lineups and you look at the, the older lineups a lot, there are always uh, one or two girls that just are your larger individual, but they also hit for power and they're, they're very, very talented at the dish. So um, again, you need to make sure it maps to your, your goals and it fits your needs. Um, so body weight and size, I'd say um, one of the big ones, I always start with the athlete who needs to gain muscle mass is two sides of the equation. Are you strength training enough? And then from that, are you feeding yourself enough? Once you start hitting from a, a caloric standpoint, then you need to clean it up. You need to you need to focus on less fast food, less processed foods, more whole foods. Uh, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not uh, uh, certified to recommend any of these things. I, I feel that there are a lot of more just common sense. Most people know, you know, crushing McDonald's before your workouts is not your best option. 
as far as getting prepared for a workout before or for a game. So, um, generally, the athlete who needs to gain mass, uh, I'd say the one that is the, the skinnier athlete. I feel like I eat a ton and I don't get any. I don't see any gains. Um, you're going to be, you know, I eat 1,800 to 2,200 calories a day. Um, increase that by 250 calories every single day. It's literally like a handful of almonds. 250 calories every day. Once you get in that three to, to 4,000 calorie range, make sure you're getting after in the weight room, the, the scale will move. So body size, another limiting factor. Um, I think that another one that uh, I'd probably speak to from more my, my baseball experience would be like, is your skill a limiting factor? Um, and, and intertwined with that, are the people who are teaching you to hit and throw, are they a limiting factor? Um, I think that there's a huge push right now within the industry that our mantra can't be, this is what I've always done, this is how I'm going to do it, and then I got success with it, so I'm gonna teach that to the next generation. Because uh, again, that was myself when I first started getting into the, the coaching industry, and kids get, continue to get hurt. Uh, I really do think that there were some athletes I helped. I, I do think there were some athletes that I didn't help at all, and they were just really talented, and they still went on to be really, really talented. And then I think there were some athletes that I, I, I was not a part of helping them move forward with their, their process. Um, so from a skill standpoint, you know, knowing uh, some of the metrics, they're really easy to look up. Like, is your throwing velocity average, below average, above average? Where is it at? What is your exit velocity? What is your bat speed? Uh, those are probably some areas to start. Speed, home to first, 10 yard dash, 20 yard dash, 30, uh, 60 for baseball. Like, look at some of those, those metrics. Uh, and I think those are kind of your baseline metrics. From there, you can go into more advanced metrics, um, which, you know, for, for throwing, it could be the Rapsodo, uh, using that unit to look at a little bit and dive deeper into your arsenal as a pitcher. Uh, for your hitter, it could be the blast motion sensor, great thing to give you pre-contact metrics. So what is your swing doing leading up to the ball being struck? And then Rapsodo for hitting, hit tracks, uh, there's a handful of other pieces of tech out there uh, that can give you what is called batted ball data. So once I hit the ball, where, do, where does it go? Uh, traditionally, I work with a lot of youth players. So I, I do think focusing on that physical component, fo focusing on the things that the athlete directly has influence over, uh, which I guess is not the best way of saying, like your batted ball data, you definitely have influence over that. But if your bat speed is poor or if your um, your uh, exit velocity is low on average, um, like you might be wasting your time worrying about, about your batted ball data just because um, that the, you know those are the, the next tier up. Those aren't foundational. They're, they're not the most important components. Um, so that's kind of the skill side of things. Uh, I'd say from a standpoint of choosing the coach that you're working with, um, uh, really quickly, I'll, I'll say find a coach who, who has, is no, no, has no problem telling you the why Find a coach who has no problem admitting they're wrong and find a coach who uh, has a, an ample amount of athletes that they have worked with of all different varying levels who have gotten better and achieved their goals. Uh, I think that kind of covers your bases as far as finding the right coach from a pitching standpoint, a hitting standpoint, and then probably from a playing standpoint. Um, I think the last thing uh, from a player's, player's focus, like myself, from my process when I was playing, again, see myself committing my own um, error um, but make sure when you choose your limiting factors you're choosing ones uh, that map or are, are focused on those long-term goals not necessarily short-term goals so I'll give a quick example batting average you could at the youth levels be extremely fast you could hit the ball on the ground all the time you could always beat out your infield dribblers and you could drag bunt your batting average is really really high you could also play against teams that are really poor and aren't good at fielding or not well coached. You could also have your mom or dad running game changer and your batting average is, just happens to be a little higher because your errors, they're not counting those errors against you. So if you choose metrics like that, it might lead to frustration down the road because what your batting average is won't necessarily um, give you great insights to, okay, is my is that really what's limiting me? So diving a little bit deeper, focusing on the things from a player standpoint that actually uh, help you achieve your goals long-term, where what you might do at the youth level might not be the best at the, the high school level versus the college level and pro. I think taking all these factors into account, figuring out what your limiting factor is, is gonna put you in the best position to make a plan to attack those limiting factors 
and then using the objective numbers to figure out if it's working.